Okay, so this one has served me quite well, but I think we need to get rid of the bodges. I actually ordered this pretty soon after uh, making these tweaks, but it's just been sat in the, uh, the pile for a while. Now the first time I did one of these, we ran into trouble with the hot air on the buttons, so I'm gonna try and avoid getting paste on those. I'll hand solder them afterwards. Oh, larger pads can be very forgiving, as long as we've actually got solder on them. I think we've got a good result there. I think we're actually missing a little bit of solder from that. I do worry about the caps for the crystals because different crystals have different capacitor recommendations. Now I've selected the ones here for the 25 megahertz crystal that I've been using on the, on the clock, but um, I'd like to experiment with the crystal more at some point. Let's go for the two smallest chips first. Tiny little power management chip. It looks like I missed the resistor array getting components out. I will go and dig one of those out. People on the YouTube comments are very quick to tell me I should be buying much more expensive tools, but I actually quite like getting uh, good results out of you basic tooling.
I was a little bit worried about this one. It was a bit more solder than I'd like on the pad. Looks to be okay though. That all looks pretty good. Now, in theory, that's done. Let's see if we can give it a quick test. Okay, well, we're not dropping out brake mode. That's not right. state being pulled back into brake constantly is uh, is clearly at least a problem here. I'm slightly suspicious of this MOSFET because that's what that does. If we fire the brake line or select down to ground which is the same as pushing this button. There was a pull up on the input here. Top of this resistor should be 5 volts. then the bottom of it appears to be floating. All right. Could it be we didn't get a good connection there? This is one of those older bars without the uh, cross connection. Okay, that appears to work. Why doesn't that? That's supposed to be a ground connection. It really is just acting like this pin's not connected. Right, that looks to be correct behaviour. Right, so should have a clock output there and next to it on both sides we should have a ground line. Okay, so it's a nice clean clock signal. Okay, trace mode, that's 15.5 hertz. Let's see if we've got a decent adjustment range on it. That's all the way up to 125, that looks pretty good. Tuning that to about 100. Right, so with the divisor set to zero, we've got 12.5 megahertz. And that's the 1.57 we've been running at in the last couple of tests. That's a simple test, pretty straightforward. Um, I think it's worth just dropping it back into the CPU build and see if it performs correctly.